Good morning, everyone. Live from Okinawa. It's the first, or the first one in a while anyway, edition of Show Tuesday, where we're both in the same room at the same time. Same country, no problem. Same city, that's kind of challenging. Same cabin in the middle of the Okinawan jungle. And that's pretty rare. That is it uncommon, is 10, 10 a.m. here in Tokyo. It is 6.30 a.m. in New Delhi. And it's 8 p.m. yesterday in New York. And uh, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Uh, really excited to be here in Okinawa with you. This is the first time Christopher and I have been in Okinawa at the same time. And we have had a uh, pretty productive visit so far. So far. Yeah, made it to a couple of distilleries. Not everyone was accepting visitors, but we did find out where they were for future reference. Mm. Uh, took a leisurely drive up the coast on the historic Route 58, which is fairly what the Japanese spirits road. Yeah, maybe. it's kind of like the, the highway. Sure, there's a it, it connects a number of islands in this southern southwesterly part of Japan, going from Okinawa up into Amami, and then into you know into uh, Tanegashima, and then all of it its terminus is in downtown Kagoshima City. Yeah. So Very you've, cool. You've got Awamori, Kokuto Shochu, and uh, Imo Shochu made along this road. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe a story for a future YouTube video or, yeah, or several. <laughs> it'll yeah. certainly be a podcast episode or something. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, we did have our third whiskey episode drop this past Monday. Oh, good week. call. Good call. We uh, haven't spent a lot of time promoting it on social media since we've been busy here in Okinawa. But uh, that episode is in. That's the episode explaining the whiskey rules uh, for the new the new labeling standards. Standards, And we will have uh, the fourth episode out this coming Monday, which will be the last episode on whiskey, episode number eight of the podcast. And then we'll get back to other Japanese spirits uh, topics. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, it's been, it will have been four in a row. That's right. And three in three weeks, because we talked an extra one in this week. So, yeah, after that fourth one hits. The fourth one, I don't want you to skip the third one. Go go in there and, and listen to episode seven, please. But the fourth one ends up getting a little bit more subjective, I guess you could say. Yeah, a little uh, spicy. A little, yeah, a little bit more of our own opinions and you know, hot takes. Not particularly hot. You're not, nobody's going to get burnt. But um, potentially a little bit more personal. Those things, so it's, yeah, it's, that was a fun one. Yeah, it was, quick. it was, but they're all fun. I really have enjoyed podcasting, and I think getting my feet under me, learning how to do it. Christopher's an, an old pro of podcasting between the Tokyo Swallows. And the <laughs> uh, if any of you do care about the Tokyo Swallows, uh, Christopher does have a podcast on that topic. And if you don't, then you should listen to it just so that you be you start caring because <laughs> the Swallows need as many fans as they can freaking get. Um, yeah. Anyway, I guess, uh, one of the main focuses today, we're going to talk about Awamori, but I think we'll come to that in a moment is, um, March 8th, March 8th was International Women's Day. That's right. And, uh, we of course are very proud to have some of the, well, I mean, without, without really realizing it, we do have in, in, um, uh, in our circle, in our network, our circle of friends and people that we have been working with for a long time, people that we have an immense amount of respect for. We have several uh, of the female toji and other, you know, who also at the same time fulfill several important roles at these tiny distilleries. And I think we should talk about them. I think we should give them a little bit of love. Absolutely. Even if they're not listening to the podcast, I That's think it. it's still worth it. Yeah, giving them some shine here. Maybe someday, somehow, somebody will be like, "Hey, these two weirdos were talking about you." Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Um, I guess I had done an Instagram post about these these fine women a couple of, a couple of days ago on International Women's Day, so you can go and see their photos and a little bit about them. I think you're going to learn a lot more right now. Um, the first, I think we just go in chronological order, and it may also be the order of relative importance in the industry. In terms of the influence? Yeah. Mm. Just yeah, because you're probably right. So the first is uh, Kinuko Jufuku. Right. And she is, she's actually 
written up in the Wall Street Journal back in the day. Was she? Her and uh, Torikai. Oh, there was a no kidding because these are two of the finest shochu distilleries in Kumamoto. And in that story, they described Jufuku Shuzo, which is run at that was run that at that time by Kinuko. I believe she's still the president, but she's no longer the Toji. Her son has taken over as the Toji. She's in her late sixties now. I mean, she still puts her back into it. She's in the distillery on the distillery floor. At least this season she was. Yeah. She she had planned when I talked to her last. She had planned to retire for this year, but then because of the floods and the and the pandemic, she ended up going back to work because they couldn't really bring people in from the outside because of, for those two reasons, the flooding they sort of closed down any outsiders coming into the region. Right. And then also once the pandemic hit, they just didn't have anybody else to do the work and they needed to continue making shochu. They are the smallest shochu distillery in Kumamoto. Uh, with their brand Mushagaishi, it's resolutely traditional. It's so traditional. Two, two, very big, and getting four, bigger. Thumbs up. That's right. Four thumbs up for, for four thumbs up for and for Jufuku. And Kinuko is a force of nature. She is a powerhouse. Uh, I remember the first time I went to visit the Hitoyoshi area, which is where these in the Hitoyoshi area, the Kumagun region in 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 Kumamoto, there are twenty eight. Shochu distilleries, sorry, 20, 27. 27, 27 yeah. shochu distilleries that make Kuma shochu. And that's a WTO designated style of rice shochu. And I was there as a guest of the local shochu guild. So I was being driven around by uh, the official who was the, essentially the head of the guild. And he took me around to all of these different distilleries. And of course, he was trying to be accommodating. And I told him I'd like to go to the smallest distillery mm -hmm. you can think of. And he did take me to Toyonaga, which is quite small. It is. Yeah, sure. Right. He took me to Fukano, which is quite small. Quite small. Took me to Oishi, which is quite small. Uh -huh. <laughs> then he took me to Jufuku. And you feel like you're walking into somebody's house uh -huh. because you're just about walking into somebody's house. It pretty much is. <laughs> they, usually when you go to these distilleries, even if they don't have a public facing showroom where you can buy their products or that sort of thing they've got some sort of lobby welcome area that sort of thing when you walk into jufuku it's a dinner table and then there's a little sofa in the corner and a bookshelf and a desk mm -hmm. and they this like there might be a file cabinet yeah something. yeah <laughs> and there is there's a sofa and a love seat and the the look on her face when i walked in Mm. was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and good scratch. And and she she sat me down on the sofa and she grilled me with questions for about 15 minutes before she would let me go into the distillery to see what, she was, what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, she and then but by the end, she opened up uh, and by the end, she had invited me to the second floor of her home to her tea room to have tea. So she can be a sweetheart, but <laughs> it takes a little bit, a little bit of time to, to get that door open. And now when I visit, I often visit unannounced. Uh, whenever I go to Hitoyoshi, I'm usually bringing my bicycle, my Brompton, and I will bike over to the distillery to say hello. And I just hang out with her and her son for 30 minutes, an hour. We have coffee, we catch up and lovely people. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic people making delicious show too. That's right. And I think the, uh, her son is, is, is something else too. And he is a massive human being. He gets a lot of press for being like the, the big muscular bloke in the shochu industry. They love to have him in a tank top and in various publications flexing. That's right. Yeah. He would literally not be out of place in an NFL locker room. Yeah. He is, he is big enough. He would look guy. like he belonged. <laughs> he might not know what a football is, but he, he, he definitely would belong in, on, on the team as far as his size. Yeah. Uh, and also just a, a really, really lovely guy. He's a big, lovable guy. Yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a big grizzly bear, I guess, given his size. <laughs> and he's a goofball. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. And he, so he's taken over and actually it's the only distillery where normally they'll have like their awards or things up on shelves, you know, when they, when they've won competitions or that sort of thing there, that's where he stores his protein powder. Yeah. So only distillery I've ever seen protein powder up on the shelf. I don't think it goes in the shochu, but it certainly goes into his <laughs> his muscles. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, that's Jufuku. And then uh, actually, just to finish up the story about the Wall Street Journal, uh, so Torikai is also quite small, but they're on the complete other end of the spectrum, both for flavor and philosophy. Uh, and that that was the contrast that the journal was doing. You should definitely try to find that article. It's this is like web 1.0, web 2.0. It's on there. Okay. Not always easy to find, but if you search Jufuku and Torikai, maybe we'll drop the link in in the uh, uh, in the chats. But it's it's a really really interesting article uh, because Torikai they make one style of shochu. They've been making the same style since what the 80s maybe. Yeah. It was developed in cooperation with the university professor. It expresses beautiful ginjo aromas like yeah. sake. They essentially are making sake and then distilling it. It's a 40 or 42 day fermentation. Yeah. It's like twice as long Super as normal. cold fermentation takes forever. Not a lot of action. That's right. And, and tons. Yeah. yeah. And tons, just boatloads of aroma. That's right. Yeah, we should. And then Jufuku, on the other hand, with Mushagaishi, is it's this rich, umami laden, delicious. <laughs> Gonna use the unctuous classic, word there. Classic yeah. rice shochu. Uh, so that both from a flavor perspective and from a corporate philosophy perspective, can you say corporate when you're talking about Jufuku? They're really the family business. I mean, these corporate are is a strong word in yeah, that context. They yes. are local artisans. Yeah, yeah. Even even Torikai, while there's more money behind it, it's still not corporate. It, they have their own unique flavor as well. But we'll do an episode on Torikai. They're, they're definitely. Uh, worth an episode. And they are available in, in a couple of international markets. So if That's you right. can find it, it's got a very beautiful white label with a, a kind of a, it says, just says Torikai. Yeah, it. it's, well, it's got a, it's a bird basically. They've, yeah. they've made the kanji for Torikai look like a bird. And if you, if yeah. you get it, definitely try it straight first. The, the first time you sit it, you have to try it straight. Mm -hmm. And then maybe on the rocks, not with heat, don't heat that one up. It gets it gets unwieldy if you heat tori yeah. tori kai up. On the in rocks, my experience, on the rocks is great. The soda is great. Yeah, a splash of water is great. Tori kai, and it's it's not just that ginjo, but it gets umami in the middle. Yeah, and it finishes sure. the ginjo. Again. Really, really lovely drink. But sorry, we're not talking about back back yeah. to so. uh, musha guy. See that one works really well. That one does work with heat. Mm -hmm. uh, very good mizuwadi and on the rocks. So I've never tried it with soda. Is yeah, it good with yeah. soda? Like it was said. Yeah. yeah. It brings out the sweetness of it. Makes sense. Yeah. No, really, really excellent drinks. Jufuku Distillery, Kumamoto, Kinuko, Jufuku. Yep. The, the matron. The godmother. The godmother. Of, the boss. Oh, she is. Yep. She, and, and she holds court. Uh, I remember going into a Kisa Ten, like a coffee shop. They serve like curry rice or, you know, these sorts of things. I was having lunch with her and her son. And her ears perk up and it turns out Tori Kai's in the corner having coffee with his friend. Uh -huh. She goes over, slides into their booth and talks at them <laughs> for like 30 minutes. And then she, then she realizes she's forgotten me at the table <laughs> and, and her son. And so we, we get invited over and, and the, the five of us hang out for another hour. It was That's just funny. Yeah. But he, she just talked at him. Yep. And he's, he, he's a good guy. He just sort of, you know, he's used to it. Yep. Yeah. And they're it's about the same age, I think, but she, yes. she definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> tells him who's boss. Love that. So, Love yeah. That. Really, really fun. Um, number two, I guess, I don't, and actually don't know which of these told you is more senior in age. I don't either. Uh, but I think I got the order right. And the second would be Masako Furusawa in Miyazaki. Um, my introduction to her was when she was with the Miyazaki Shochu makers that came to New York a couple of times. Okay. And I was, I was essentially there as the ambassador to talk about the Shochu. I'd never met her. I had never heard of her brands. Uh, again, resolutely traditional. Everything is handmade. All of the distillate. All, in fact, the first fermentations are in, in ceramic pots. The yeah. uh, second fermentation is not. But then everything spends time in clay after distillation. It's, it's not completely kame aged, but it is uh, partly kame aged. And it varies how long she leaves it in the kame, depending on what. Uh, I think it depends on the kame. I think it depends on the brand. Yeah. Yep. She's, uh, it's a very cool distillery. Another one like Jusuku, where you're kind of entering a home. Now, in her case, the home is literally and sharing a wall That's right. with the distillery. Um, it is set, there's a separate entrance, technically. Yeah but it feels very cozy. It's a very 
lived in space, the distillery as well. And the home, I mean, you tell this better than I do, the home is just that of another era. Yeah, it is. Um, they, in, during her childhood, they added a modern convenience called electricity. Um, and I don't know if she has Wi-Fi yet in the house. I didn't think I to think, check. I think she had a last time that's still a different house. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's it's it is one of these right out of a almost a samurai movie type uh, samurai movie type um, house, right? It's got the lovely Japanese garden. It's got the wraparound uh, porch with the with the sliding glass windows all the way around the back of the house. The entrance is through a stone wall, you know, gate sort of thing. Uh, to Tommy, everywhere. Yeah, you know, you're taking your shoes off in the Genkan in the entrance. Uh, there's a pair of slippers waiting for you. Uh, there are no tables with chairs. I never saw a chair. Yeah, there's no chairs. You're sitting on the floor. Everything is floor based. It's very, very traditional, and it really reflects the shochu as well. That shochu is extremely traditional. What what they're making at at uh, Furusawa. Jozo. So maybe that's a little lesson, right? Shuzo is usually the word used when it's an alcohol maker specifically. That's right. And usually Jozo is used when they make or made other things. Yeah. Right? Often so, often uh, soy sauce was one of the other things that they had a license to make. That's right. Yeah. And Furusawa Jozo made soy sauce and miru and mm -hmm. miso. And they still make soy sauce? And I think they Why stopped all they of stopped? those. Okay. The And the miso was the last thing they stopped making. It was actually miso, they were making miso until I believe the 80s or 90s. Uh, and now they're fully uh, shochu producers. And they make everything. They make uh, rice, barley, sweet potato, and buckwheat, soba. They're based in Miyazaki, which is where soba was invented. Soba shochu was invented. And uh, yeah, they make all of those and they make them all really, really well. Um, and sort of my my, my memory of, of Furusawa uh, Again, she was part of this group of, of uh, toji that came over from Miyazaki to New York. And she was a fish out of water. I mean, <clears throat> you visit her distillery. It's a smaller town. I think Nichinan, at least a little spit of land that her distillery is, is a smaller piece of land than Kitoyoshi. And I cannot imagine taking Chufuku-san to New York. But that would be that would be an experience. Taking Furusawa san to New York was also an experience. Mm. Um, and she was there with uh, Kuroki san from Kuroki Honten, which he's he's a little worldly. Like you know, he's traveled. Um, his town's not any bigger, I guess. But I think he you know he he went away for university. He's you know he's he's you know he's been outside. It's a different it's a different generation too. Right? True, true. Yeah, he's younger. But uh, yeah, Jufuku. Ended up, I, she had such a sweetness to her. She's just a, and so humble. Yeah. Right. Really, really humble. Um, and so, yeah, and she actually, to her credit, she came back. She came back to New York two or three more times, I think, after that. Um, and and she ended up being, of all those makers, the only one that didn't find an export partner on those trips. That's wild. Yeah. And I think of all of those, the Miyazaki makers who tend to make that pilgrimage, uh, or we're making it once a year for a number of years. Her shochu is the the what I, what I think both of us would consider to be the most old school. Mm -hmm. um, it really has a, a, a really identifiable, a very perceptible earthiness to it, and a funkiness, and a, it's got a back a really rigid old school backbone that once you really get into shochu and especially sweet potato shochu, then you, you start to look for that. And when you find it, you're like, Oh, that's deep. Mm -hmm. I like that. So yeah, she's, she's making that style of shochu. And that's a little bit different from, for instance, I mean, if you, if we use the word kuroki already, where you've got products that are much uh, just rounder, like the, the, the edges are very clearly defined on the products from both of his distilleries. And he does the, the family controls too. And Furusawa, on the other hand, it's, it's, it is all about that one place. It's all about the, the being in, on that spit of land between the river and the sea and 
It's about the the microbiome in the the, the walls in her distillery are made of mud. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And then what's you know you you make that same show to anywhere else, it'll be completely different because so much of what's happening in there is about the place. It's the people that are making it. It's it's what's happening inside of those four walls and and that the the amazing old school wooden beamed ceiling. Mm-hmm. A very cool place. Yeah, you, they, they can't wa- wash the walls. They cannot use water on the walls because it will disintegrate. Bye bye so, distillery, basically. <laughs> it, it's literally mud walls. So really, really uh, interesting place. And you're right. It, it doesn't matter if it's rice, barley, sweet potato, or soba. When you taste it, you're like, oh, that tastes of Furusawa Jolza. Like yeah. There's a distinct character to the drink that's almost unmistakable, mm-hmm. which is really, really interesting. Uh, you can get that, get that with other makers, but a lot of makers are, are trying to make milder, more round styles because those are more popular with consumers. Mm-hmm. But Furusawa says, no, this is how my family makes it, and I'm going to continue to make it. Now, to her credit, she did release a brand that's designed to appeal to a broader audience with the Aizakura Sen. Uh, sen is definitely yeah. a lot more approachable for people who are new to sweet potato that's right. That's, that's, right. For, that's for sure. And it but it doesn't express as a Furusawa product, almost. Mm-hmm. Right? Now I have to revisit it. I haven't had it in a couple of years. So. I haven't either. I haven't had it since I was drinking with her at an izakaya in Miyazaki City, probably three, oh geez, it feels like forever, three years ago maybe. Mm-hmm. And I tried it and I, I, I actually blurted out, I was like, you made this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, and I, I didn't mean that in any other sense than, wow, this is, this is really mild and unassuming and not the, the Furusawa, uh, of, you know, I guess it's a funk, the Furusawa funk. Yeah. yeah. That needs to be a song. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, Furusawa song, another sweetheart, um, salt of the earth. Four thumbs up. Yeah. Four thumbs up for Furusawa. Yeah, it's we're, we're mirrored. With this is it, no, it's not mirrored. That's the problem. Mirror. Yeah, oh, it's not like Zoom Streamyard, which we're using right now, doesn't mirror. Yeah, so, so if I do this, it's because I'm so used to the phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then third on our list today is Maiko Jikuya. Jikuya san. Yeah. Now she is in Kagoshima. So again, we've already hit like three prefectures here. Started up kind of up north, I think. Yeah. Yeah, So Jikuya san is making satsuma shoju. That's right. Which is the geographic indication or yeah, yep. the GI for uh, sweet potato shoju made in Kagoshima Prefecture. Uh, distillery up in the mountains on the foothills. Mm-hmm. And it takes a long time and a lot of curves to get there. So if you have issues with car sickness, avoid you may not want to visit <laughs> or you may want to take some Dramamine before you get in the car. For me, if I drive, I, I don't get as car sick as easily. Okay. Um, but I don't, don't have my license here. Actually. So I may bike there the next time I go. It's going to take me a full day because it's a good, it's a and good it's way. It's a to good uphill hill lot, march in many parts of it. So a lot of hills. Yeah. Yeah. But bring a change of clothes. I think I could do it. I'm sure you could. And, yeah, and now Jikuya, she's interesting because she spent time in New York. She lived in New York. Do you know how long she was there? I think, I believe it was more than five, less than 10 years. But she spent a good part a good of her time. earlier yeah. life in New York City. And so she's fashionable. She's refined. She's everything you'd expect from someone who's lived in the city. And in fact, I think she lives in Kagoshima City and then drives to the distillery every day, which a lot of told you not do that because they need um, it, it's there's so the days are so long. Sure. Yeah. yeah they and, need to not have that 50, 60 minute commute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But her distillery is big enough that uh, she's not the only one making it. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, and Furusawa is not the only one making her. So she's got several staff, but it's I would say GP is probably twice as large as Furusawa maybe. It's a good question. I, I didn't count tanks or comment when I was there. Yeah. It's a little easier to count them at 
at Furusawa because everything's kind of, kind of just in inside one. of these four walls. Yeah. Which, and Furusawa has, well, she has that new warehouse, the, mm -hmm. like the wooden cedar warehouse. That's right. Which has the big um, steel tanks. Mm -hmm. But to, there still weren't that many of them. Yeah. But, and G, but Jiku is doing her fermentations in, in stainless, right? Or it's her first fermentation kame as well. There's a bunch of kame for the Ichiji Shikomi. Okay. Yeah. And then. And stainless. So oh, maybe, maybe she's, she might be a little bit larger. Maybe not twice as big. But <laughs> she seems, she feels like. Yeah. Well, it's just, a, it's a more modern facility. I think that's maybe that's part true. of it. It just yeah. feels. Yeah. Fudicello is a, a one floor building. It's an old, it's probably from the 1800s, if not a little bit earlier. Sure. Her building with the mud walls. Mm -hmm. Jiku has multi-story. They, they, they actually start processing soon the ingredients at the top and use gravity to do one of that. So yeah, yeah, a little bit, um, a little, a little bit more modern, a little better bit. planning. Yeah, a lot of wood, beautiful place. Yeah, uh, much very in a totally different way, very photogenic place. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then she also does a lot of ceramic pottery, uh, and that's actually where they're they're a little bit more consumer facing. When you walk into the distillery itself, there is a tasting room to your right, and right in front of you, through glass, is the is all the ceramic pots aging, and the still is actually just beyond that. Yeah. So it's a really, really nice, well set up, uh, set up for that, and and then and their products are more friendly. I think you know she she appeared in a manga uh, about shochu uh, yeah, relatively weird. early on in her tenure. Yeah, and she leaned into that, right? She was like, okay, this is an opportunity. We're going to make pretty feminine shochu, and we're going to have pretty feminine packaging, and it's good stuff. Yeah, it's it's it is that round style that you were talking about earlier. It's the it's the more approachable type of shochu, which is good, right? Not everybody needs to make resolutely traditional, and there are trends, right? That things change certainly. Yeah, and, and her drinks are nice. Um, do you have a? Yeah, my, Michael Michael song is uh, she. That it's 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 really really interesting she's there's uh there's a playfulness to everything she's got that new brand which is pandas in like a oh. pinwheel on the on the on the front label and it's just it's really clever mm -hmm. it's a, it's a very it's thoughtful and it's smart and it's very easy sipping too so a little bit dangerous sure, sure. so i guess that's that when i think of jikuya shochu i think of like, oh, geez, I could probably drink a whole lot of this very quickly, and I need to cease and desist right yeah. here. But yeah, again, so that's uh, Jikuya-san in the, in the Satsuma township area of, I guess you could call it northern Kagoshima. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because it really is just over the mountains, over that, that ridge of mountains from uh, Hitoyoshi. Mm -hmm. And then over the mountains, kind of more to the east is Furusawa. So geographically, as the as the bird flies, as the crow flies, as the whatever species, the, as the crow flies, it's uh, they're not that far apart, um, which is which is really interesting when you see how tightly packed a lot of these distilleries are. There's so many distilleries down at the southern southern half of Kyushu, That's right. and we're now I guess now we're going to take a bit of a jump. But before we do jump all the way to our final uh, the final person that we're going to mention, let's give the four thumbs up to uh, Jikuya-san making thumbs, thumbs up to, to Jikuya. Lovely, sure. lovely Satsuma Shouchu yeah, yeah. in Satsuma town. Yeah, and now I, I met her in New York City as well. The first time I met her, she was in town for an event, and but it wasn't through any official way. It was... You met her at a bar, didn't you? Yeah, it was uh, a, a couple of buddies of mine who, who were regulars at uh, Shouchu Bar Hachan. May they rest in peace. Uh, uh, were they? They texted me like, "Hey, a friend of ours is a shochu maker, and he's in town. You should come out and meet." And I was like, "I didn't know you guys were friends with a shochu maker. That's pretty cool." Mm -hmm. And so I, I headed out. We went to Aya Shochu and Tapas Aya, and which does still exist. That's where I met. I met Jikuya, and it's funny when I meet her here in Japan. She basically won't speak English. Yep. Right. True. But get a couple of drinks over in New York City, and she's just chatting away. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's my 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 uh, intro to GQS story. She was she that was a, a fun evening. And our final maker is is yeah. Nishihira. That's right, Serena Nishihira, who is uh the youngest by a generation. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not she, close. she started not that long ago. Um I guess early 30s now. I'm gonna say I don't wanna might, she might she yeah. might have hit the big three up. Looks about 19, maybe 22. Sure. Yeah, she's 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 uh yeah, really interesting character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, artist yeah. that basically came back, a musical artist and, and kind of a visual artist, yeah, as well, visual artist as well, who came back, went back to Amami Oshima, which is, as many of you will remember, is the home of Kokuto Sugar Shochu, and kind of kept the family business running uh, after, a, I guess, a bit of a health issue in the family. And she's been there pretty much ever since. And that, that might have been five years ago now. Yeah, give or yeah. take. I think that's right. And you know, she's a legit musician. Mm -hmm. She is a she's got a lot of energy, and she's doing everything. She's doing both. She's yeah. still making music. She's making great shochu, and she has she has a presence to her. She's a lot of fun to hang out with. Uh, her, the kokuto shochu that her distillery is best known for are the brands. Sango and then Kana. Kana is a barrel aged kokuto sugar shochu expression that, I mean, they don't make a lot of it, but it's probably the easiest of their brands to find outside of Kyushu, mm -hmm. I would I say. That's true. Yeah. And it's, they do a little bit of the fermentation in clay pots and then it's the tanks. And it's just a nice kind of middle of the road, easy to understand. A little grassy, a little dark sugar type of kokuto shochu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, I think that's it. middle ground is a, is a good way to describe it. It's a nice drink. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, obviously, the barrel is kokuto, you know, high malt. You know, sure. It's basically like a rum and soda with a little bit more umami to it. I think it spends about a year in the barrel. The usual. It's not person. not as oh, ex, not a really long period of time. I think it might be a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's funny when you know she reminds me a little bit of Takan from Mato Zakura. Okay. Uh, just, I guess trying to set some frame of reference because she was an artist living outside of Amami, a musician. I mean, she's got albums. You can actually buy her albums on iTunes um, or wherever you buy your Japanese music. That's um, a big question mark for me. I have no idea. She has a you. website. I think. That's true. That's probably where you should go. But she's um, she has uh, basically she made a deal with her family. Uh -huh. She said, "All right, if you you know if I can continue to play my music, I'll come back and help." Right? She basically bargained with her family, which in Japan is pretty uncommon. I think. Yeah, yeah, right. And they, she was basically coming back to rescue the family business. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and. What she ended up, what they ended up doing for her is building her a music venue adjacent to the distillery. Right. So she's got her own concert hall now, basically. And it's a pretty cool place. They they bought the building next to the distillery, which was an old bunch of apartments. Basically, it was an apartment block, maybe three floors high, if memory serves. And on the on the first floor, on the ground floor. They line, they, I think they knocked the wall out. So they connected a couple of them. They put a sound booth at one end of this now long room. And then on the other end, they put a little, a little dace and, or the, you know, the performance area chairs in the middle and along both of the long walls are casks of kana that's aging. You know, you got casked shochu in there resting. And then a lot of the other people that work for the distillery are musicians themselves. So they have like a, a distillery band. I don't know how common that is. I'm not sure I've, but, but it's pretty cool. If there are any other distillery bands out there, I think we should, I think there needs to be a concert celebrating both them and the, the things that they make. And uh, so, yeah, they have jazz concerts in there. And on the second floor, which I think is also very cool, they, they converted another one of the apartments into a bar. So everybody after the show, everybody goes upstairs and they drink Nishihira Shochu. Yeah, really nice. I um, actually haven't been in that space. When when I went, 
last time I was down there, I was there for the launch of a new brand. Uh, and Serena performed. She did, and her performance, it was actually a, a, he wasn't, he was like a jazz violinist who came down from Tokyo, apparently very well known. Hmm. They call him Neko Chan, and everybody does this when they're in pictures with him. Like he's a cat. And I have pictures of Serena and him. And and they put on a great show. Her band got together. She performed. She plays the flute. Mm-hmm. I think she plays a couple of other in- instruments. Yes. She sings. And they put on a great show. And then, and of course, afterward, everybody's out for dinner and drinks. And it was, but they did that at a different venue. It, oh, okay. it wasn't at their they were somewhere. downtown in Naze, right? That's right. It was in downtown uh, Naze City. Uh, but really, really fun time. And yeah, so Chuck Malone, those of you who know Chuck in New York, he this is where he interned for uh, Nishihira. I think he was there for almost three months to learn how to make kokuto shochu. He's gone on to learn how to make rum in the Caribbean. He's kind of been bouncing all over the place working in distilleries now. So it looks like he's gone down a rabbit hole, not only shochu, but distilled alcohols generally, and it seems like sugar-based is primarily what he's studying. But I, I guess he was making some of the, he was working on Moto for a while, Moto Spirits in, mm-hmm. in Brooklyn, where they make a rice whiskey uh, and a couple of other things. They make a rice whiskey? Yeah, okay. they do. I didn't know yeah, that. it's a, they're using, doing it in a Thai style or a Vietnamese style? Uh, yeah, Thai was, okay. But it is using rice, and it's using some sort of koji fermentation. Interesting. Yeah, so he was working there. Uh, he, he's gone down to the Caribbean. I'm not sure what he's doing now. I've got to reach out to him. He, last time I talked to him, he was upstate, kind of hiding out during the pandemic. But um, yeah, anyway, Chuck worked at Nishihira, also a musician. In fact, he used to play for Second City. He's right. a piano he's a man. Hell of a piano player. Hell of a piano player. So they they started a band. They uh, they started a band while he was there. They played several gigs around Amami, and he fit right in. That's very cool. Yeah. So I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see them play. That's right. That's, uh-huh. So those are our four our four ladies. We gotta get, give thumbs up yeah. to, for Serena. Four or, thumbs up for yeah. Serena Nishihira and her band. That's right. That makes beautiful kokuto shochu down in Amami, and uh, yeah, International Women's Day March eighth. We're we're a couple days late, but you know we we're not, we do this on a Wednesday morning here, so That's one right. of these days it'll probably fall on a Wednesday. That's right. A couple of years from now. Yeah. So to recap, we got Kinuko Jufuku. Jufuku. And in Kumamoto. In Kumamoto, making Kuma Shochu. We've got uh, Masako Furusawa in Miyazaki, making everything. Yeah. We've got Maiko Jikuya in Kagoshima, making Imo Shochu, sweet potato shochu. And Serena Nishihira in Amami Oshima, making Kokuto Shochu. So, covers a lot of the spectrum. It does. We yeah. have not found a female Awamori maker, though. No. Um... I know that, for instance, with uh, Sakiyama Distillery, the boss is. I don't. I don't know how much of the. I don't know how much of the um, brewing and distillation she does these days. But the boss, anyway, is uh, certainly qualifies for this club that we're talking about today. Okay. And. Uh, we unfortunately we don't have any of her products with us. We we have a couple different ones. Again, for those who joined late, we are in Okinawa right now. Um, you know, kind of having a a mind meld down here, trying to make sure that we are taking great bounds and leaps and strides and every other type of forward movement you can think of to further the interests of the shochu and aomori industries. And I guess, yeah, let's, let's talk about what we've, sure. what we've uh, yeah, seen. I could, in use some more coffee, I could use some coffee too. That's a good idea. Let's have some yeah. <laughs> awamori co- coffee. Yeah. Awamori coffee. Comes in a, in a little plastic sippy cup yeah. that you can get at the, at the convenience store with beautiful Okinawan themes. Yeah. Little bingata pattern. On, on and that. yeah. Hey. Where is it? Five o'clock right now. I have no idea. Um, the closest to five o'clock on my ah in in California. That's it's now five thirty nine. So there we go. All right. Well, here's the California. Thank you, California, for giving us the excuse that we need. Yeah. Fortunately, no driving today. That's true. Yeah. No, no car. Today we're gonna hole up here in in this. Uh, Mine is childproof. Cottage. This 
cottage in the jungle, essentially. It is. It's very green here. Yeah. We're on the yeah. side of we're a gonna, We're going to brainstorm a bunch of stuff. And hopefully we have all sorts of interesting things for you guys coming out of that brainstorm. I can't open it. <laughs> There's a tab on this side. No, I tried it. No, on this side. Oh, that's the big tab. Yeah. Here you are. Here you are, son. Thanks, Dad. Okay, so in in Okinawa they don't say well they do say kanpai, but also they say kari k a r i with a bar with a bar. Kari. Kari. In the chat, let us know what you're drinking. Cheers. Very strong coffee nose to it. Mm. Very strong almond taste to it. Oh yes. Okay. This is this is not low proof. What is, what is it doing? This is twelve percent. Shoot, that's yeah. a lot higher than I expected. Yeah, we may be taking a nap after, <laughs> after this. Let's yeah. see what um, yeah. the the weather in John's like. Is it really cold enough to be wearing what you're wearing right now? Yeah, well, I'm wearing I'm, a sweatshirt. I'm sweating right now. I'm pretty warm as well. I'm wearing a toque, so this helps. Yeah, it was a little chilly last night. I mean, it is winter. Or I guess and, or it is spring. Spring. Probably in the seventies during the day. It's seventies Fahrenheit during the sunlight hours, and then it probably gets down to like fifteen degrees Celsius maybe at night. So we're talking thirty-two plus thirty, so sixties, mm -hmm. basically low sixties. Yeah. So very good sleeping weather, mm -hmm. and then very hospitable during the day. That's right. All right. Is this this may be overkill? Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I, I was just committed to wearing my, my his my, normal tracksuit, my Irish tuxedo. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I'm warm. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna open I the windows after this. We just I didn't probably, want the wind outside to. Probably should have gone with my my shochu t-shirt and stuff. But um, <clears throat> this is nice though. I'm enjoying this, and I I've been making awamori coffee at home. You know, I've, I've got such a weird work schedule now because normally I don't want caffeine and alcohol together because caffeine will keep me up, the alcohol will make me tipsy. But I've got such a weird work schedule now that, and I've also, for those of you who follow me on, on Twitter, you might know this, I've given up beer for the month of March. What a silly thing to do. Yeah. It, you know, I've been trying to get down to a specific weight for a long time. Gotcha. Well, that'll help. And I cut out beer and bread for the month of March. And that probably I'm going to continue this until I hit that weight goal. So it might take me longer, um, especially since I allow myself cheats. Although with my cheat, I have to run at least five kilometers. Drink a beer, run 5K. That's right. You no, know, you could do those at the same time. That's actually a sport in some areas. Yeah, it probably is. I ended up running 10 kilometers, 11 kilometers yesterday. Mm -hmm. I kind of got sidetracked. I was looking for an izakaya here near the, the cottage. And I I went to a run to one town, checked out that izakaya scene. I was like, well, maybe I should go back the other way. So I ran back along the coast to the other town. And by the time I got back, and it's it's uphill. The last kilometer and a half is uphill it is we're on a mountain well on, not on a mountain on yeah. a foothill I don't, that last kilometer and a half i've i don't know that i've ever run uphill that far especially uh, not after running uh, yeah. nine and a half other kilometers hey good so, job you yeah. ran you ran 10k how about the last one straight up yeah and i ended up uh icing my knees last night which i haven't done since soccer and you like, can walk today day long yeah i can walk today it worked out the ice helped a lot Give, so give, give the track star the uh, credit for that. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, ice and, two, two, ice and ibuprofen. Two times state champion. Get it in. <laughs> um, yeah, Vermont. I don't think it counts if you're from Vermont, <laughs> honestly. Um, so when you make Aomori coffee at home, what's your ratio for? It's not this. This is much stronger. 12, 12 percent. Well, what I started doing. So yeah, I got completely distracted. My coffee, uh, Aomori coffee. What I'm doing recently because I gave up beer, but I want something refreshing at the end of the work day, like when I'm making dinner or even with dinner. So I've begun drinking. And then what happens is I end up having meetings at night. So having caffeine doesn't actually matter. And mm -hmm. a little bit of alcohol, the meetings start like three hours later. I don't think that's a problem either. Mm -hmm. I hope not if my boss is listening. Um, but the, uh, the, I, what I'm doing is one part awamori to four parts coffee to five parts soda. So I'm essentially making a coffee soda wadi awamori. You add, okay, so you add bubbles to it. I do, because I, I want that effervescence like a beer. 
That sounds good. Actually. It's it's quite good. And and if you oh. use like a fruity coffee, like a you know something that's that really goes well as an iced coffee, yeah, and you add, and you add bubbles to it, it's really good. Hold on, yeah, bubbles. Yeah, you're gonna put some bubbles in this. I think they've got sugar in here too. This is pretty. Sweet. No, it it actually says no sugar. Really? On the front, at the very bottom, in very very small. What's the almost last? Almost like optometry. Oh, yeah. What is it? it says coffee. But what's the second ingredient on the list? Or no, it's awamori coffee. Awamori times coffee, and then in English it says black, and then under that, those tiny two things is is no sugar. What? What's that one? Oh, over there on the back. On the back. Oh, I'm not even looking at the back. Awamori coffee. And then something related to the aroma. I think they put an additive in it for the, okay. the aroma. Yeah, because it has it has almost a vanilla note to it. And then, yeah, yeah. Maybe they're using a they're using vanilla. something to even it out, probably. But you so sorry, one more time. The ratio of coffee to alamori. It's one one part alamori, so basically a, sh a shot of alamori. Okay. Uh, four parts coffee. Okay. Five parts soda. So I'm doing ten. Ten, ten parts. Ten, ten parts. This is enough in a tall glass, you know. Collins glass. Even bigger than that, almost like a beer pint glass, right? Because again, I'm trying to replicate a beer. Okay, this is this is sparkling water, not more alcohol. <laughs> yeah. You want some? Yes, please. Thank you. There's yeah, not so a whole lot of sparkle. But... And what I'm now thinking about with this drink is, so I don't know if folks are familiar, but the coffee sonic is now a thing in Japan. So coffee sonic, it's it's like a gin sonic. Which is a Japanese cocktail, which is a gin and tonic, but you cut 50 50 soda and tonic water. So you, it's not as sweet as a gin and tonic. It's pretty good. Yeah, gin sonics are nice. Well, I like, yeah, I like sonics. Oh, and we have gin. Oh, we do have gin. We just, yeah, need, some, not start that yet. We just need some tonic water. Yeah. Um, so gin sonic, but ice, and then there's coffee, coffee sonic as well. So I'm thinking the Awamori coffee sonic. That sounds good. If Needs there are to any, be any bartenders out there, go get yourself some some awamori and start playing with that final right yeah. ratio. And let the, us know. The awamori I think that's that you good. use is 30%? Generally. Uh, generally. generally yeah. 30%. 30% is pretty normal for awamori. What we have here today is we have two gold. Now, this is made by Helios, which is yeah. a very large company Huge. that makes a bunch of different types of beverages in general. But we've well, also like got some, some uh, two gold. Awamori. We visited Chuko the other day, actually, and yeah. had a great time talking oh, with, the, with the boss, the shacho, uh, Mr. Oshiro, mm -hmm. gave us a, a, a great tasting. If you are ever in Naha, Okinawa, you should definitely visit Chuko Distillery, really probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe the only distillery in the world that also has a pottery studio right inside of it. Yep. So they make, you know, they make their own pots. It's a local style that they kind of pioneered, the guskuyaki style. Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. They do this flame scorching on the outside of their pots, mm -hmm. which is really cool. In the kiln, they got four four kilns inside of yeah. their facilities. Yeah, Just so a freaking amazing place. Two craftsmen, full time shokuni. Yeah, the craftsmen are making the pottery. Beautiful, beautiful pottery. Unfortunately, I I I, I splurged this time. <laughs> you uh, did. I, I, we, I was talking to Shacho and he disappeared for like 10 minutes. I came back with a lot lot lighter bank account. <laughs> you spent like $700. Um, <laughs> yeah. Love it. But I've been, for those of you who have been paying attention, I, I really love secondary aging awamori at home. Chuko makes their own ceramic pots. How can, you How can I not yeah. bring some of those home? Yeah. So I got one 5.4 liter pot which is a that's three isho bean yeah right it's a good size it's yeah. like it's about this big nice big hefty pot yeah can still wife. sit on a table it doesn't have to go Your on the floor kill you. yeah could could be uh and then the and then i got a 1.8 liter but that, that that form factor was just gorgeous i couldn't oh, walk away from yeah they make yeah. this really they make i've got one next time i, I do one of these at home just look behind me up high there's one of those that starts really wide at the mm -hmm. base and it kind of tapers up yeah. 1.8 liter, really beautiful form factor. You're right. Yeah. I love I love those. Yeah. And that, that one was a little spendy because it has 10 year old awamori. Yeah. So that's that's part of what you're paying for when you buy these pots. Because you can buy the empty pots and they're a little bit cheaper. But then I was looking at the amount of liquid and the age on it that you're getting. I was like, it's it's just worth it to get the extra. And how, the extra cool, how cool is that that you're buying a vessel in which the the spirit will continue to 
Well, sure. That's and, right. And in some, in many cases, improve. Yeah. Uh, that's very. That's awesome to be able to do that at home. It would be like buying a cask from the distillery, a whiskey distillery. Tate, uh, probably a really small cask, obviously, yeah. bringing it home and then refilling it. That's the goal here: is yeah. to home age and and mature your own spirit. We're going to focus mostly on Awamori at first, but you know, I'm I'm do, kind of doing the same thing. Although I didn't spend seven hundred dollars when I was there, I may go back now though because I feel <laughs> jealous. I, I I don't want to be I don't want to be outspent. You've been buying them secondary. I do buy them secondary, and then I get them I yeah. get them and empty them, and then refill them. With yeah. more awamori, That's but you don't have to stop at awamori. I mean, how cool would it be, yeah. especially if you can get your hands on this outside of the country, or, or maybe you bring one back with you and you start secondary aging other spirits in an awamori pot. Mm -hmm. And awamori has this, you know, kind of like what we were talking about before: this funk, this mm -hmm. this really earthy, um, really substantial weight to it. Uh, you can just, it's a very koji. It's a hundred percent koji. That's a beautiful, that's yeah, a really cool thing right. about right. awamori is it is the only traditional Japanese spirit that by law, by tax law, or at least, sorry, I take that back by WTO GI has to be made with a hundred percent rice koji, hundred percent. So you're, yeah. you just get so much of the koji influence. Yeah in awamori and that's really special it's really unique it's also very 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 traditional mm -hmm. and as old school as anything i can think of in the spirits world in japan yeah so yeah and now there are 100 percent koji shochu usually rice or barley 100 percent barley koji 100 percent rice koji they're rare they're uncommon but here it's in a lot of work, work everything is 100 percent koji yeah and it, I knew that, but it didn't really hit me until we how had, how unique that is, how right. special it is. That's right. Yeah. Even sake is not 100% koji, right? No. Sake, you're making koji. You start your shubo, which is your yeast starter, with the koji fried rice, and then you're adding steamed rice. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, same with rice shochu. Yeah, exactly. 100% rice koji spirit. Really, really cool. And, and because of the predominant use of Thai rice and... Christopher and I knew that there was uh, awamori being made with Japanese rice, but we didn't really, I don't think, understand it that well or didn't, hadn't really. There's just, there's, there's only a, like maybe four brands right. scattered amongst yeah. four different distilleries. But we were able to try two of them this week. Mm -hmm. They're really, really good. They're really interesting. Yeah. They're, but they, they express differently than awamori. So this is the next rabbit hole I think we've got to go down is how does Thai Mai versus. Uh, Japanese, yeah, Japanese, Japanese rice, Japanese domestic rice. rice. How do they differ in their expressions as awamori? Right. We need to find the distillery that's making everything else is identical. Fermentation, temperature, time. Yeah. Just the still everything. Right. And the, the, and the, the way, interesting with the rice. thing about these new brands of awamori that are made with local rice is that the rice is actually hyper local. So the output of these distilleries vis-a-vis -vis these new 100% domestic brands. Mm -hmm. Is really small. Yep. So they're very hard to get your hands on. And we were quite fortunate to be able to taste through a couple of them in, at different venues, mm -hmm. mind you. They weren't at the same place. Chuko does make one, yeah. but they make some ridiculously sm small quantity because yeah. it's rice from this one farm on the side of this hill that they're able to uh, source. And they just... Like 600 bottles? Uh, yeah. 600 it, liters? Something 600 like liters or something. Yeah. Really, really, really small ridiculously production. small. And they had, um, and so I love, as, as, as I've said before, if, if I can choose one alcohol as my single favorite alcohol, I will die on this hill. It is long, hot aged only. Stuff's good. I, and I love sweet potato shochu. I love mushagaishi, right? These are, these are drinks that I, I really, I love, I absolutely adore. But if I had to choose one thing on that, tropical island if i was shipwrecked and i could only drink one thing it would be really really long aged awamori yeah. it is just so lush so deep so rich for the sake drinkers out there that would be koshu, koshu. but yeah. in okinawa they call it kus that's it k long first u k u and then s u kus and yeah. that's if you, you have to say it that way 
Uh, if you want any respect, you have to, when you're down here, you have to say kus. Um, they will say it when you, when you're visiting, they'll call it kosher. Right. They, yeah. they will, because that they know that you yeah. might understand How do they that know word. from out of town? I, I don't know. It, it's just, it's, we must smell different. Yeah. That's probably it. The, um, so anyway, that loves the drink, loves, loves, loves the drink. So when the president of Chuko is introducing us to some of his, his products, he pours this. He doesn't tell us what it is, but he pours it. And I think we're going over an hour today. We're at, we're at yeah. 55 minutes now. So I but guess. it doesn't cut off, right? I don't think it does. I don't know what Facebook and, and YouTube are going to do to us. But yeah, yeah, I don't think it's, this is not Instagram. So we'll just That's go right. with it. Yeah, anyway, yeah it, go ahead. this is just, this is good stuff. And how often are we together? That's true. Right. So all we're right. just going to talk. And you guys, you know, tune in, tune out. Watch later. It's all, it's all good. I think um, with, when he poured that, and I just told him that my absolute favorite spirit is long aged kus. This is at Chuko. At Chuko, right? He pours something for us. I knows it. Christopher knows it. We both go, oh, I, like un, unbelievable aroma. I, right? I believe the, the exact words in my mind were, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. going up. It was so interesting. Yeah. Lots of vanilla, lots of caramel. Really, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking he just gave us like a, a, a unicorn of, of, you know, 40 year old expression because he poured the last drink. It, it was like, this is the bowl. last I have and you guys are going to taste it. it was yeah. Like, what? Because yeah. that was probably really, really precious. Yeah. Three years old. It was only three years old. It was only three. And, like, and then I fell off my chair again. That's the minimum aging for a kusu. Yeah. Exactly. You can't make younger kusu. Younger I have never had it. a three year old awamori yeah. that was so character driven that yeah. had so much personality yeah that it drank like it was 15 20 years old yeah it was yeah no absolutely I, if, if he was to ask me how old is this i probably would have said something in the 20s yeah that was a remarkable yeah. expression and, and then he proceeded to and he was so proud he was beaming yeah he, 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 <laughs> we did give him the the yeah. reaction he was seeking mm -hmm. and then he poured us through some stuff that is fermented with a, a yeast isolated from mango trees. And yep. then he poured mm -hmm. us through something that was, yeah, he just has these different expressions. He, these different, and also blends in some cases that are completely distinct. There's a Chuko lineage that you, mm -hmm. that is discernible yep. through all yep. of these drinks. Yep. However, they were remarkably different. Mm -hmm. And it was so much fun to sit there with somebody who is clearly just gushing with pride yep. about the quality of the drinks that his distillery makes. Mm -hmm. But then also just to experience the really wide palette of aroma and flavor that is possible in a from a category that is really handcuffed it's in really terms different. of how they can make it. It has to be made with rice. It has to be black koji. It has to be zen koji shikomi, meaning 100% koji fermentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can't. They can't just goose it with extra rice and extra starch. That's, right. That's right. And in the in the traditional style, it has to be single distill, one time through the pot. There you go. Right. And it's like I remember first time I went to Omami Oshima was when I really started to understand kokuto shoji. It it was a pretty I guess we're displaying this Helios Kohi Wadi. Other we've not we've not made it Kohi Soda Wadi, but um, yeah. And I've been to Okinawa before. This is my third time. I, I'm kind of embarrassed. That it's only been three times. Right. But it's uh, I'm so impressed. And then we visited yesterday. Just on our drive up, we stopped at two. Yeah, we stopped at the new Saki Saki Moto. Location yep. used to be next to the castle. They moved and they restarted operations last year uh, up north up, or although in, north where we are. Although now. in April, which was not a good time to. It was start. an interesting time to yeah. try to relocate. Obviously, for for many people to mm -hmm. do anything last year was a was trials and tribulations all over the place. Yeah. But and Sakimoto, actually, that's so the 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 pot that I received from Maurice. That's right. Is from Saki. That's right, and that is. We, we figured that's somewhere between, I think when we did the math, it's between 15 and 28 years old. And I was, I am a long-term fan of I was supposed to. I was supposed to bring you a sample of it. I'm sorry. Now you're telling me. 
Um, yeah, but it's still it's still it's still in Fukuoka. Okay. So there's it's it's not gone. But it's going, the interesting thing about Sakimoto. I recommend and what I'm what I'm slowly doing is stockpiling old bottles of Sakimoto. Yeah. Purely because I want to taste the difference between yeah. the old and the new. Is it's it, going to change. The distillery moved quite a distance. 20, quite a distance. Twenty kilometers. It was the old distillery was somebody's house. Yeah. It was it was very Furusawa in that sense. We talked about yeah. Furusawa-san at the beginning at yeah. the top of the hour, yeah. and now it's now it's a nice modern facility that is adjacent to something that's called Ryukyu Mura, which is kind of a a little bit of a art yeah art is artisan driven cultural center devoted to the promotion of Ryukyu, which is the former name for Okinawa, Ryukyu Kingdom. And so they're right next to that. They're actually up on the hill a little bit further. We did drive up there. We talked to one of the people that works in the distillery and he, he, to look on his he face was smile. like, as soon as we parked the car and he saw us, cause you know, we're in the car, so we're not wearing a mask yet. And he's just like, what is going on? These guys aren't. There, there's a there's a mili- there's a strong military presence in Okinawa, of course, but we have beards and we have scraggly hair, yeah. and so like these guys are not military. What the hell? Yeah. Just rocked up here. So I got out of the car, locked it, nodded to him. He's like, oh my god, I have to talk to these guys. <laughs> he gets so he get, he even goes around to the door to unlock it, and we have a, we you know two minute conversation, but. Uh, Sakimoto, I'm very interested to see because as we indicated, as we've indicated several times, place really affects the spirit Mm -hmm. and something that, you know, Shochu, Awamori, you got open fermentations in many cases, whatever is in the environment. And this is a, this is a tropical climate. I know it doesn't look like it, but we are in a tropical I, climate. I am, pretty warm. I am I got, burning. I, got, I, got a shed, I, got a <laughs> I would take off my hat, except for that. I know that I'm, I'm sweating and I've got, it's like all like slicked back. I'm going to look on, like I should be driving a motor. Nice it's work. Nice work. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be interesting. The juxtaposition of flavor. I think if they can maintain the same flavor profile, then I will well, I'll be honestly, I'll be shocked. Mm-hmm. I will be completely shocked. Oh, sure, sure, sure. There's no way that, that brand new building. It's there's, there's it, no house east. No, not, not they, yet. Like, scraped the walls and like and then, it on the floor. and then Sam blasted the walls with the old house east. Wiped, wiped it on the ceiling or something. <laughs> Maybe that's what they do. That's what I would do. Yeah. If I was in charge of that transition, yeah. I would take go beans. scrape the walls. I'd take the beams out. I'd take bring the, the beams. Just like, hang, hang them in the, in the room. Ta- bring the joists. That's actually really interesting. I want to make a house. I want my my future vacation home to be made out of the beams of a former Aomori distillery. I bet the cooking would be amazing too. And you know, they so we went to Sakimoto. Yeah. They're not really they, but the new place is going to be great because it's it's open. It's going to be open to the public. Uh, yeah, the, but the the one thing I like about the old place was I really enjoyed it. It was very. It really is in the shadow of Shuri Castle. It's really just in one of the neighborhoods that, on the back side. On the like opposite the there's a there's a what do you call it? a monorail? Shuri Jo uh, station or Shuri Castle station is one of the stops. You have to kind of walk to the other side of the castle in one of those back neighborhoods was the old distillery. And they were just used to drop-ins. They were very accustomed to people just showing up because it said, oh, it says. It says actually it doesn't it, on Google Maps it said like Shoju uh oh, I think it said Shoju Brewery or something. <laughs> it's really insulting in, on two levels. Yeah. It's not they're not making shoju, they're making awamori, and it's not a well, it is a brewery because they brew, then they distill, but it's a so uh, I'm sure a lot of people dropped in there and they just had the it, open, uh w- come on in. People are naturally just gonna walk in. You walk straight into the distillery, and then on the left side was this tasting table. And it said very clearly, "Do you need like go ahead, have at it?" And they had a couple of their brands sitting out, little little cups that you could use. In you know, here's where you put, here's where you take a clean cup, here's where you put a dirty cup. Why are there not more homeless in that neighborhood? <laughs> it was it was so I would I went in there a couple of times. Walk in there. I know. Just start sampling. Walking around the distillery. There's nobody to stop you. If there if there's nobody there, they don't care. It's just you walk around, take photos. Like, oh, okay. There's well, there's the filter, and there's the 
condense. Oh, the where is this still? Oh, it still is back there. And oh, you could sorry. kind of figure it could you so could figure sorry. it out if you know knew what you were looking at. If you didn't know what you were looking at, it wouldn't be that interesting because it's a bunch of tanks. And then you're like, I'm not sure how all of this works, but there's free booze, so I'll stay here for at least 15 minutes. And then I think that's what a lot of people did. And uh, I really, I really appreciated the the sake moto. And there's two sake motos in the Aomori world with different kanji. This was the one that used to be near Shurijo, and now it's it's uh, where where is it now? I'm not even sure the name of the town. I think it's up. It's. If it's not in on Onna, it's just south of there. Yeah, I think it might be a little south of Onna. Yeah, it's north of the military bases on that. that stretch it's north of Kadena, mm -hmm. military uh, air yeah. force base. Sort of on that peninsula, sort of in that region. Yeah. Anyway, very cool. Okinawa and geography will be a future lesson. But yeah, it, but no. So that was really fun. And then the other place we stopped by is actually Manza. So this is Monza. This is the closest distillery to where we're visiting. It is geographically. We and never heard of it. Christopher had never been there, which I was shocked. I didn't know that there was a distillery I, he hadn't been. To. I hadn't been. <clears throat> I hadn't been. Yeah. And uh, so Monza, it's the same kanji, kanji on top as Manzen in Kagoshima, which is one of our favorite soup potato shochus. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get the reflection off of that. That is a really and shiny label. It is Monza. And this is, we got this in a convenience store. They would, they would not sell us a bottle. <laughs> Because they're not open to the public right now. Yeah. Um, and but this is a from a convenience store. This is a kosh. Uh, kus, it's a kus, kus. So it's this is a at least three years old. Yeah. But only twenty five percent alcohol. It was a very very good bargain. I think we paid yeah. nine hundred yen for it, which yeah. is which is about eight, eight and a half dollars. Yeah. In the local uh, convenience store. Unfortunately, we did a lot of damage to it last night. We we well, went. We were throwing darts. Is it we, dark or oh yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. That's why that's why I have bedhead because I couldn't get out of bed too much earlier before this because, um, well, Christopher, it turns out, is a ringer. I was a ringer. I he's, used to be. He's a darts maven, and I'm competitive. I'm competitive. And you were very good. You played I, very well. I hadn't played darts in a long time. Neither did I, but, but it, yeah, it, yeah, it came back to me. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but later later than we intended. It was. We were playing cricket. It went yeah. a little late. Cricket's a good game. Cricket's a great game. Yeah. It's a great strategy game. We need a we need a we need we need, we need one more person for we, so we can make teams because that's uh it's a lot of fun when you have to do it. Wouldn't it be three people? No. So we need two more people. Well you can you can actually play with three people. But as teams? You can also you can you can have pairs. No, but how can you have a pairs pairs with three people? We need we need two more people. Yeah. You so said you said one more person. Each. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So all right. So if any of you are in the area, come over tonight. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, uh, teams cricket. Teams cricket. Be yeah, great. we're drinking all morning. Yeah. Well, what we have left, we're going to have to go to the combini. We do. We do. This is really good though, and I, you know what? I have more coffee, and I have more soda. So Manza, just to just to oh, yeah, off the discussion of Manza. Manza is uh, old school. Really old school. It's, it's very tiny village, seaside. Seas very seaside. In fact, they're probably uh, two two blocks from the ocean. The still uh, the the isekai we went to last night. Yeah. We we ordered it um, on we ordered it on the rocks. Essentially, they wouldn't sell us an ichigo of it. So we're like, okay, we'll have two glasses on the rocks. Oh no, that, that was a different brand. Sorry to call you out. Was it? Yeah, we got we got it. We got an ichigo. Oh, no, you're right. Clean up. Yeah. Sell it that's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this one they sold it to us uh, just in a little uh, Okinawan glass tariff, and we poured it. Which, however, we wanted to drink it, and it was immediately like, "Oh, that's got, that's got some, that's got hips, that's got <laughs> it, <laughs> sense it, of place." Wow, yeah, that was really, really good. It right, reminded me of, like, if if food is salami, I yeah, think that's not that's not be unfair. Manza, Manza. or something very much like it. Yep, the the distillery was really fun. We, we get out of the car. We're both, you know, just tired from travel and whatever. I'm following Christopher, but we're both just sort of looking around. <laughs> and slammed right into each other. Christopher, <laughs> Christopher stops short, and then I end up bumping into him and tripping over. They actually had the hose running out where they were dumping their, um, I think they had been dumping their their leaves. There was a truck with, with a tank on the back, and I guess they had been filling that earlier. And that hose was just there, like, dripping a little bit into the sewage, the sewer grate. And I tripped over Christopher and that. Yep. Kick right Christopher now, right in the heel. Welcome, welcome to. Uh, yeah, but it really, but really old distillery. It was funny. The only person we saw while we were there, we could hear people working inside, but we didn't want to 
uh, bother them. There was one guy whose apparent job was to, what they do is funny. They, they give you what, 20 yen per bottle? I think was the, they, they do, they do buy bottles back. Yeah. They'll buy bottles back for 20 yen a piece for the locals to they, so that they can just reuse bottles rather than, you know, because I think a, a new bottle from a bottle maker is going to cost you close to 100 yen. Yeah, 50 to 100 yen. So they're like, all right, 20 yen, bring, bring your bottles. So there's, there's this poor guy. He must have been like the little low guy in the totem pole. His job is to wash those bottles, get the label and the glue off, re, repackage them. He's just sitting there looking at his phone. <laughs> Wait, waiting the, for the next grandma to show up. In the afternoon sun waiting, yeah, with all these bottles and boxes around them. So. Um, but it's so fun to see that this is, you know, normally when you go to a distillery, if they know you're coming, they're ready for you, right? They've got everything ready to display what it is that you want to see. But here we were able to just roll up and see what their normal day is like. Mm -hmm. And this is these are small businesses. They have tiny, tiny businesses. And it's just, it's so nice to experience this, you know, because we, a lot of, especially early on as I was getting into this and being hosted by the local guilds or, you know, whether it was JSS, you know, Japanese Sake and Shochu Maker Association or Jetro, they're take, you're on a, you're on a curated tour, right? You're visiting the big places, you're getting wined and dined and all that. And it's really fun to just drop into places. The only reason we knew Monza existed was Google Maps. Yep. There was a Shochu brewery on our drive, I was like, oh, that's not too far from the road. Let's, let's, let's go there. Go, yeah. And I showed Christopher the kanji. He's like, how do you read that? What is that? And it was, it was. I think the problem was, I, yeah, I can read Manza. I couldn't read Onna because the name of the distillery is actually, I think it's actually, is it not? Am I crazy? I thought it, yeah, it's Onna Shuzojo. Shuzojo. Okay. So that one, for whatever reason, this is disappointing too because we were actually our destination was on the city and I still couldn't read the kanji. Yeah. But I looked at it, I was like, I kind of know how that could be pronounced, but I am not really confident about this. Yeah. And then the main brand is Manza. And I was like, is that another pronunciation for Onna? It doesn't make any sense. And yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. But as soon as I saw the distillery, I was like, oh, okay. Manza Awamori. I can read that, but I still don't know which distillery makes it. Turns out it's Onna Distillery, yeah. it, which I hadn't heard of. Yeah, before. we're still technically in Onna. I think we are. Yeah, we are. Japanese cities are a little bit like counties, right? They're pretty big. There's a lot of- In language. some cases, yeah. I think it's Onna, and then it's we're in some subsection of Onna, and then we're in Nakama mm -hmm. neighborhood. I'm really not sure. We're, yeah, there's, there's like three levels. There's Nakama beef is right down the street. Sure. The, the restaurant, which we did not go to. We went to the adjacent izakaya, which was a lot of fun. What? They, they, they were a funny place. That, yeah, we're, we're just rolling on. We've had a little hour more coffee. I think, you know, it's maybe a three hour episode. Now, but if you stick with us to the end, you get, yeah. uh, you get air hugs. That's right. The, um, the izakaya last night was, they spent a fortune on decoration. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's like that's part, that's like their whole thing is yeah. like how cool and, the inside is. And and the other thing I've realized because we've now been to Izakaya several times this week. I'm okay. The uh, you need to order local food. They they make salads for tourists because they understand we want fresh vegetables here in Okinawa. Nobody makes salads well. <laughs> Nobody cooks fresh vegetables well. Is kind of true. This is a At meat what we've seen so and far. seafood and fermented things. It's, uh huh. If you're cuisine. a vegetarian or a vegan, do not come here. Yeah, Just yeah. Don't. You're in trouble. The and and at this place, I ordered a couple of, and I was like, all right, let's. Order. Usually, I'm in charge of food when it comes to Christopher because he doesn't eat. That's why he stays so thin. Um, but he's getting better. He's learning to eat. I I met. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Continue yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> And he, he, um, anyway, so I, I'm like, all right, let's start with, and what we realized the other day, we, we ordered several dishes, just the two of us out for dinner, izakaya. We were the only people there, mm -hmm. the only people. And the cool thing about izakayas in Okinawa is they are often open air, which you can't find in the rest of Japan. So when this izakaya, they open the entire front wall along the street. It's just open air, right? We're the only customers and there's the waitress and the, and the chef. Mm -hmm. And the 19, cook, right? 19 year old waitress and the 20 year old 
Exactly. Cook, the line cook. Right? 21 if he's left. And we order a bunch of food all at once, and it all comes at once because yeah. we're the only customers, right? So the, the warm dishes are getting cold. The cold dishes are getting warm. Uh, so I learned a lesson there. And so last night I started with the cold dishes, which yeah. were the salads. None of them were good. And I'm like, man, we picked the wrong izakaya. There were only three places in town. I was like, man, we did not hit the right one. Then we ordered some of the warm dishes, which is all of the Okinawan dishes. Yeah, those are the soul food dishes. So good. <laughs> so good. So when you come to Okinawa, don't order the salad. I think that's the lesson. And bring your running shoes because you're going to have to roll that off. Yeah. You know, just bring bring your joggers and yeah. be ready to to pay for it because that's the right. food's good. The food's the, very the good. The food is so good. And the, but and it's the heavy. almori is plentiful and yeah. it goes down very easily. But I mean, just to go back to Stephen's point that I am getting better. I don't think it's that I'm necessarily, unless it's gyoza, I think specifically, <laughs> you, you or probably. noodles in general, I don't tend to really put my back into any dish. I don't go after it. And I'm yeah. not going to, like, when I'm full, I'm full. I'm not going to keep yeah. eating. I don't, oh, it's going to go to waste. I'm really sorry. I, I, I repent. I'm just not good at that. If I'm full, I'm full. And I get full very quickly. <laughs> unless it's a liquid, I get full very it's quickly. Like the stomach of a canary. Yeah, and uh, but I am I am doing better. I'm working on it. I'm in therapy, yeah. <laughs> and I I uh, what but what where I'm making up for it? I think is that I actually I have been studying cooking. I know there's no evidence of this. <laughs> I hope at some point in a future episode when we're talking about food, I can talk talk to I can drop some comments about how to make it. And uh, you know, obviously Stephen's the chef, the home chef here. But I am paying attention, I think, <laughs> is what we'll say for now, because there's no evidence that I know anything about food yeah. other than Abura Soba, Expert. where I have Expert. opinions. Yeah. And I know nobody that's listening to this other than the may maybe Maya really knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Abura Soba is incredible if you have a chance to try it, especially in Tokyo. But Tokyo is in other cities. You can. I've and never seen it outside of Japan. If, you, if any of you have a restaurant, Learn to make up with a soba. Christopher will be there every time he visits your town, probably every day. I will talk about it a lot too. Yeah, That's absolutely. It's and it's a, it's a great dish, it's, but it's not soba. No, it's ramen noodles. Yeah, it's like it's as much soba as yaki soba is soba. Exactly. Which are ramen noodles. Yeah, right? ramen Un noodles. Exactly ramen noodles. Yep. So good. A Buddha soba is so good. It's it's Christopher. and it's a Tokyo it's a Tokyo style essentially of soupless ramen. Or yep. it, it, I mean, there is some goop, there is some juice in there, but it's yeah. it's not what you expect. So delicious, delicious. That's, a, that's yeah, probably another conversation. It's yeah. so deadly. Yeah, I crave we, it. Nightly. We probably need to do an episode on uh, drunk food, like right, because it's basically to soak up the booze at the end of the night. I like that. I like right? that. That's you a get, future you know, episode of show obviously Tuesday. New York. It's pizza, right? In Tokyo, it appears to be abura soba. In Fukuoka, I think it's more alcohol. I wish it was abura soba. I do not have access to. To 2 a.m. Abura Soba. Oh, no. I live. Oh, well, yeah. I, unless I need it. Gotcha. Have you ever made Abura Soba? I have. I have made it. Oh, so you are a cook. But I can't do it at 2 a.m. because then I will get uh, I will get uh, drawn and quartered by the person that I live with. Ah. Yeah. Because the kitchen is very close to the bedroom. Mm. That could be sneaky. Oh, uh, so Brett, our good friend Brett Larson, let us know they actually have Abura Soba in LA. So everyone get go, out. Go to LA. Oh. Try a Buddha soba. When, when will, it's safe to travel anyway. I wonder, it's, what it, I wonder what that's like. I really want to try it. I really, really want to try it. Yeah. I, I actually, you know, you've converted me just as I've become a Swallows fan. I don't listen to your Swallows podcast. I you, nobody listens to the Swallows podcast. But I, and I don't have a, a hoodie or any other, any other accoutrement, but I, I, I do have a soft spot in my heart for the Swallows. And you've converted me to a Buddha soba. Every time I go to Tokyo now, I have to have a Buddha soba. Although it's usually a lunch for me because yeah, it's so it's, heavy. Me too. It's, it's plenty. Soupless ramen, but you do use various, you can dress it the way you want. You can add, I always add uh, some type of spicy, they tend to have a spicy garlic type mm -hmm. of paste, or not a paste, like a slurry. <laughs> That's how yeah. nice. That you can drizzle on there. Uh, Ryu, chili oil, and vinegar are yeah. staples of. Yeah. So you got acid, acid, heat, fat. Oh, it's so good. Umami. Like, What's what's, what's not, to, not love. to love? Yeah, yeah. delicious, delicious food. Um, coming back to Okinawa, 
and Awamori, because we should probably wrap up at some point. Yeah, right? let's get let's 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 tie this one off. Um, that was a link to the Abuda Soba. So Brett posted Brett, on Facebook. I will definitely drop the link to the Abuda Soba shop. So please check that out in mm -hmm. the in the in the notes there. Um, it's got me a little tipsy. This is well, twelve percent alcohol, yeah. and we We've, haven't had anything to eat. So fair. Fair feel I'm, I'm warmer than I was when I started. And yeah. I was quite warm. I had vitamins for breakfast. How about you? I had sleep for breakfast. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. So, well, this was fun. This is our absolutely our longest episode, eighty minutes, and there are actually still people watching, which is as a glutton for punishment. Yeah. And we love you and we appreciate you. Um, so, the as we said at the top of the hour, please listen to the Japan Still episode seven. Episode seven. And whiskey, whiskey standards. Whiskey standards. Episode eight coming next Monday. So you have seven days to listen to it because we're going to build off of that very soon is going to be, like I said, like we said, subjective. It's going to be personal. It's going to be our opinions, our hot takes. And then we're going to move off into what's next? Uh, uh, after that. Yeah, we're going back to basics. We're going to, these are episodes we recorded actually a while ago. We're going to have one on the difference between shochu and sake. Right. The difference between shochu, shochu and, and soju. That so one's we've, we've hired uh, personal bodyguards. <laughs> That's right. In we're going to get taken episode. out after that yeah. one. That's not that bad, I guess. Yeah. We don't say then, anything really right. And then we've got a we've got a third one that's been recorded and is waiting, which kind of goes in that same vein, but I actually can't remember what it was. I don't either. There's a third episode of along that line of, of what makes shochu different from something else. Right? I don't recall. Yeah. So is it shochu sake, shochu, soju, soju and then one other? And then there's one more, I, I believe. Whatever. Those were yeah. those were Long ago, late recording, night recordings. Yeah, like December, January. Yeah. But because we realized that it wasn't either we knew that the whiskey. Uh, we knew something was coming. We didn't know the substance of what was coming with the whiskey yeah. labeling regulations. Yeah. We realized, you know, if we spend all of our time on the really traditional Japanese spirits that nobody's ever heard of, the podcast might not gain traction as fast as it would if we did some whiskey episodes early on. Um, and we did the rum as practice for the whiskey. Basically, but yeah, and, and uh, clearly gin's coming up. Gin since, is coming. We are we studying gin, Japanese gin. Brought this an episode, bottle so. along. This is Asakura Craft Asakura gin. from uh, Shinozaki and Shinozaki. Fukuoka. Really pretty label. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably what we're drinking tonight. Hopefully not all of it. Um, I got to drive tomorrow, so I'm going to have yeah. to be adults about this. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. I, you know, I guess what happens when you get the two of us together is we just can't stop talking. Very true. Right. I know a lot of people who would say the same. Yeah. So, um, thank you everybody for tuning in for another episode of Show Tuesday. This has not been, I mean, top of the hour Show Tuesday, then it turned into Al Moore's Day. Al Moore's Day. I like that. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, we are drinking our Aomori coffees. Please try this at home. Tell us what you find to be the best mix on your end. And we'll be, be back again next Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. in Japan, uh, 8 a.m. on the, oh, no, 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 Daylight Savings Time. But yeah, when's that? Tomorrow? Soon. So it's going to move. If you have Daylight Savings, it changes by an hour potentially. So uh, keep that in mind. One later. hour later. later one I hour think. later. Yeah, because you're going to be one hour closer to us, I think. It's going to move. At least if you're in New York City, now it's 14 hour difference. It's going to become a 13 hour difference. So it's going to go one hour later, which is better than one hour earlier, I'm sure. So uh, we'll see you again. And please, uh, you know, tune in to everything that we're trying to do and, and comment if you don't mind. Let us know what you're thinking. And we appreciate what everybody's saying over here in the sidebar. Yeah. And it's we've reacted to some of it. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, well, I'm blind. I mean, Maya hit us with our, our more one. Well, Wednesday. Uh, oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> oh, Wednesday. How about a Wednesday? A Wednesday. That's it's another a Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. It's been a great. It's a great start to our a Wednesday, That's right. and we hope that when you finally get there, that it's a great a Wednesday for you too. We will be back again soon. But until then, as always, a very hearty and heartfelt cutty.